Hello and welcome to the news on Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, on the occasion of his appointment as the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the presence of Sheikh Ahmed bin Abdul Aziz Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated Dr. Al Zayani with the Royal High Trust for his appointment as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, wishing him success during his duty and in carrying on the continuous achievements of Bahrain diplomacy in various fields as a reflection of His Majesty the King's interest in this vital sector since the foundation that established Bahrain's global identity and foreign political work affairs. His Highness pointed out the extensive experience and knowledge of Dr. Al Zayani upon his career in the Bahrain's governments in addition to his position as Secretary General of the GCC. This will contribute in the advancement of Bahraini diplomacy and developing the foreign politics work by establishing great achievements according to the foundation of the Kingdom of Bahrain that's considered high trusted and respected globally. His Highness confirmed that according to the bright knowledge in the diplomatic field of Dr. Al Zayani, he is capable of implementing the objectives and instructions of His Majesty the King that aim to work in consistency for improving Bahraini diplomatic performance that ensures the sustainability and preparation aligned with the global developments. Dr. Al Zayani expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his warm welcome and congratulation, confirming his dedication in implementing the royal vision towards Bahrain's diplomacy, continuous success, and led by the outstanding achievements to harness his experiences in enhancing the values and firm foundation of Bahrain diplomacy with increased standards and reputation for the Kingdom of Bahrain in and around the world. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to continue enhancing joint cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities to serve the country and its people and achieve the goals and aspirations of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Representatives Council held a joint meeting between the Representative Council Office Authority and the Shura and Representative Council Affairs Committee and the government. On the parliamentary side, the meeting was headed by the Representative Council Speaker Fawzia Zainal in the presence of the first and second deputy speakers, heads of committees and the council's secretary general. On the government side, the Minister of Parliament Affairs Ghanim bin Fadl al buinin Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali al Khalifa, Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa al Khalifa, Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil al Humaydan and Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Muhammad al rumehi were present. During the meeting, the means of enhancing cooperation between the Representative Council and the government were discussed. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, chaired the weekly meeting where the council approved a draft law on the Commercial Companies Law of Decree by Law 21 of 2001. The council also approved a draft law of adding a new topic to civil service law of decree by Law 48 of 2010, which aims to regulate promotions and provide legal protection for employees. It also approved a draft resolution of decree by Law 46 of 2002 regarding the legislative and Legal Affairs Committee's report, which aims to develop the objectives of the criminal policy to include the side of protecting society and maintaining public order by reconciling with the victim and reconciling with the administrative body in the criminal case, which reduces the burden of litigation and increases the criminal protection of society and the interests of its members. The member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and chairman of the Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee at Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, chaired the third meeting of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Committee, which was attended by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs Ayman Al Muayyad and the Assistant Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar. His Highness Sheikh Faisal affirmed the importance of emphasizing optimal athletic performance based 
based on the principle of winning gold medals, as well as the importance of cooperation between all parties in order to further develop the field of youth and sports. His Highness said that this is in line with the principles of open and just competitiveness, as per the vision of His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Faisal ordered the Investments Directorate of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs to increase the pace of development in every vital field in order to create more investment opportunities and to make the best use to the available resources. His Highness was then briefed on the various initiatives of including the FOROS Youth Training Program, ongoing efforts to pay athletes, the initiative to build 100 sport pitches across Bahrain, the serious video game competitions Serious Blast Pro, Tumuh Fund, and abolishing homeworks for students. On the occasion of the Kingdom's celebration of the anniversary of the National Action Charter, Bahrain Institute for Political Development, in cooperation with Bahrain's Institute for Public Administration, organized this morning the lecture, The National Action Charter from Theory to Practice, emphasizing the methodology of Bahrain in implementing the principles of the National Action Charter that led to prosperity and progress at political, economic, social, legal, and other levels. The lecture was given by Deputy Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain. Institute for Political Development, Dr. Sheikh Mayi bint Sulaiman al Utaibi, who showcased the march of national action in Bahrain since the launch of the National Action Charter by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa in translation of the ambitious visions and goals carried by the Charter. Dr. Sheikh Mayi indicated that the Charter resulted in many gains, the most prominent of which are the return of parliamentary life, the holding of municipal and parliamentary elections in 2002, 2006, 2010, 2000. 2014 and 2018, in addition to completing the building of constitutional institutions, such as the establishment of the Constitutional Court, the Office of Financial and Administrative Supervision, the Supreme Council for Women, and the National Institution for Human Rights, the Obudsman, the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, and other national institutions. Employees from different governmental ins ministries Agencies and institutions attended the lecture and were interactive, stressing the importance of the Charter and its role in the comprehensive fundamental changes witnessed in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It really means so much to Bahrain as this is a turning point in Bahrain's history. So having, um, uh, having to talk about the National Charter in, in today's day and age is very important, especially for the government employees uh, who have attended today's lecture. And we were delighted to have Her Excellency uh, Dr. Sheikh Amey bin Suleiman Al-Atebi um, to uh, lecture us on this wonderful and enli enlightening uh, lecture that we had this morning. Uh, some of the most important highlights uh, that were discussed today was definitely, um, let's say, the history of the National Charter as to what it was and where we are today. So the turning points in terms of important, uh, let's say, the achievements of the National Charter of um, of what it was to where we are is, is definitely the highlight. It's definitely important to have uh, many entities in today's lecture, as a lot of them come from different government organizations, um, and they have been um, you know, a bonus uh, in today's lecture because they would only grasp all this information that they have um, witnessed today that they can take into, hopefully, uh, into their uh, ministries and organizations.